Hey guys, uh, Bert here. This is number four for learning 3D. Um, I'm going to actually skip ahead of a bunch of stuff because we've been getting a lot of requests to teach you guys pyro flips. Now keep in mind, like I said, I'm skipping ahead because I think there's other things that we should be working on now, but um, you can always go back and refer to your basics. And again, make sure you have mastered at this point all the skills that I've shown you, especially number one. Number one is critical. You need to have all your orientations backwards, inverted backwards, forward, inverted forward. Both directions, very different speeds, you know, total control. So pyro flips. Uh, first thing we're going to explain here is what, what a pyro flip is. There's, there's a lot of questions about that. A pyro flip is nothing more than just a flip while pirouetting. Meaning, if you have a helicopter, this is a friend of mine's 250 that I'm going to use to demonstrate, but basically if your helicopter, let's suppose that you're tail end, okay, and you start doing a flip forward flip. So at this point you feed forward elevator to do this, correct? So every time you're on the positive side, you're right side up, you're applying positive collective, and every time you're on the negative side, you're applying negative collective, and you're holding elevator forward to do this. Now imagine if you were to start pirouetting the helicopter right now, what would happen? Well, let's break that down into four points. Tail in, you're going forward elevator to make it go forward. When you apply left tail, the helicopter is going to go this way, correct? So at this point, to make it flip the same in the same direction, you have to be applying right, right aileron instead of forward elevator. And you would achieve the same result. The helicopter would go that way. So think about this, you've transitioned from forward elevator, you apply left tail, now you're on the right side, right aileron, to do the same thing. And then you go this way, more left tail, now your nose in. Now to achieve the same, you're applying back elevator, and it'll go in the same direction. Then you apply more left tail, now you're here. To achieve the same, now you're applying left aileron and it'll continue to do the same thing in the same direction. Finally, a little bit more of left tail, you're back to where you started, forward elevator. So with this, what I'm trying to explain is, is that we've done a flip, we've stopped, we've, we've fed left tail, the helicopters went that way, we apply right aileron, then more left tail, then back elevator, more left tail, left aileron. So we went from forward elevator to right aileron to back elevator to left aileron to forward eleva elevator. What that shows you is that you have a circular motion. You have a clockwise um, motion of inputs. So you go from forward to right to back to left, back to forward. Now, you have to fill in the blanks. So of course, we'll do it again. We start here. You're applying forward elevator. Then we set, we move the tail to the left and we apply left aileron. Well, you have to fill the gap in between here and here. And this gap is on the upper right corner of your cyclic stick. So somewhere in between forward elevator and right aileron, you're actually in this orientation. That's why you actually stir the stick. So you stir the stick in a circular motion clockwise when you apply left tail or counterclockwise when you apply right tail. So again, it's nothing more than a simple flip. You're just basically pirouetting as you're flipping. And because you're pirouetting, you're steering the stick to follow the direction of the swash blade. Um, I believe that's the easiest way to explain the pyro flip. Do you agree, Bobby? Um, another way that Bobby put it earlier is, is nothing more than doing flips while pirouetting. It's, it's basically the same thing I just explained. But uh, the key here is, is that there's several things that you have to master before you actually start to do a pyro flip. I've seen a lot of people go up there, peg the tail, and start s steering the stick. And it does not work. It's not a timing thing. Timing is important, but you have to actually fly the helicopter to be able to do a pyro flip in complete control. Um, so again, as the helicopter is rotating, with left tail, which is this direction, you start forward elevator. If you're tail in first, you start forward elevator. Helicopter is going to go that way. And as you start applying left tail, you have to start steering to the right. When you get to about this point, you should be full right. When you get to about this point, you should be full back. When you get to about this point, you should be full left. So, of course, there's a lot more to it. You have to obviously feed collective at the same time. And uh, you know, a good way to see it is every time 
the disc is on the positive side. I really shouldn't say right side up or upside down because this is right side up, obviously this is upside down. But at some point during the transition, the disc goes from being on the positive side to being at zero pitch, perfectly vertical, which you don't need any lift, and then to the negative side. And during this point of transition, during your pirouette flip, you're gonna go from positive to zero to negative. And of course, the steeper the angle, the less the negative you need. The flatter the angle, the more the negative you need. So it's all a, a combination of a lot of different things that are taking place at the same time. And it's really hard to explain, but once you kind of get a, an understanding of uh, the fact that a pirouette flip is nothing more than a continuous flip while pirouetting, you will start kind of understanding. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you, um, we're going to take my helicopter, and the first thing I'm going to show you is basically the basics that you need to master to start doing this maneuver. Um, we're going to practice a little bit of pirouetting right side up, a little bit of pirouetting upside down. I believe you have to master that um, before you actually start trying to do pirouette flips. Then we're going to actually practice some basic flips um, in all four orientations like I just showed you. We'll do a, a four flip uh, tail towards you, tail in, and then we'll do a backwards flip, nose in, then we'll do right flip and we'll do a left flip that way. And uh, then from there, I'll show you the steering motion and we'll start breaking it up. We'll start with what we call a half pirouette flip. A half pirouette flip is basically when you transition from tail in right side up to tail in upside down by steering the stick. So you apply forward elevator and you apply left tail. And when you get here, you pretty much transition to the negative side while still applying uh, left tail. When you get here, you go back. So instead of doing a complete uh, clockwise rotation on your cyclic, you're doing a half. You start top, you move to the right, and then bottom. By the time you get to the bottom, you should be tail in, upside down. Then at that point, you can take a little break, stabilize it into a tail in hover, um, upside down, and then you repeat the same. You start this time with back tail to left to top. And as you do that, the helicopter will put itself right side up again. So we're breaking it into halves and just make, basically to teach you how to steer. It's, if you're not used to steering the stick, it's very unnatural, and you have to get comfortable with that steering motion. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, fire up my uh, T-Rex 700 and uh, take it from there. All right, um, here's my T-Rex 700. Let's start, uh, let's start the uh, session here. I'm gonna show you, first of all, some basic stuff that you need to learn. I'm gonna set my low head speed here. It's a windy day, and I'm a, I don't want to say a word, but uh, I hate windy days, Bobby can testify to that. So first thing is, you need to be very comfortable doing this. Pirouetting stationary, right side up. So we're gonna be focusing this time on left tail only. Um, we'll do a little bit of right tail later, but uh, so we're gonna learn pirouette flips to the left. You have to be understanding of the fact that you have to choose left or right. You really can't learn them both ways all at once. It's just way too overwhelming. So make sure you ha are very comfortable with this right here. Just right side up, pirouetting, stationary. After that, you're gonna flip the helicopter upside down. You should be comfortable with hovering. Tail in, no in, correction. And tail in. You should be very comfortable with those two. And once you're comfortable with that, you should also be comfortable with pirouetting upside down, just like this, and hold it in one spot, okay? Once you're comfortable with those two, next thing you should be practicing, and this is not imperative that you do this, but it would be a good idea to practice that, is you should practice um, forward tumbles as well as sideways and backwards. Here, I'll show you. Forward tumble, like this, forward flips. Tail in, then you turn the helicopter, nose in, and you practice, again, back elevator, backwards flips. Then you turn the helicopter like this, and you practice these, you turn it like this, and you practice those. That's just gonna help you drastically here because it's gonna teach you that right orientation. Um, so here, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, half pair of flips like we were talking before. So what you do is I'm gonna go a little bit higher just to kind of demonstrate sort of like a safe altitude for you guys to do this. Right about here. 
and I'm gonna go to my high head speed here. So what you do is, you first of all, we're gonna break it. We're not actually not even gonna steer the stick. First of all, we're just gonna do a forward flip to bring the helicopter from tail end right side up to tail end upside down. What we're gonna do is when we're like at a 90 degree angle, I'm gonna feet left tail, and then I'm gonna feet back elevator to bring it upside down. So, positive and forward elevator, left tail, negative and back elevator, okay? I'm not steering anything, I'm not doing a half pirouette flip, I'm just showing a basic transition from right side up tail in to upside down tail in. Now we're gonna do the same, uh, but we're gonna go from upside down tail in to right side up tail in. So same deal here, a little bit of back elevator, left tail, forward elevator. I'm not steering the stick, I'm gonna do this a couple more times to demonstrate. So forward, left tail, negative, back, back, left tail, positive, forward. Um, you should get comfortable with this because this is actually, makes you comfortable with the idea of switching from right side up to upside down while using pirouette. Once you're very comfortable with this, then what you do is you start steering. And like we discussed earlier, we're gonna do a half pirouette flip first. So I'm going to feed forward elevator and I'm going to steer from forward to the right to down, in other words, back elevator, while I am feeding left tail. So this is gonna be a half pirouette flip. Here we go. I'm doing a very slow one to demonstrate. Actually, it looked kinda ugly, but it, it sets the point, point across. So now I'm gonna do the same, and I'm gonna start from back elevator, transitioning on a steering, uh, steering the stick from back elevator to left to then forward. So I'm gonna do it again. As you can see my right cyclic stick, I'm steering halfway. I'm going forward to right to back, and then back to left to forward. I'm at negative pitch. I'm at positive. This is what we call a half pirouette flip. And like I was explaining before, this is very important because this is going to teach you um, to get comfortable with the steering. And steering is very, very important. So. You can stabilize it upside down, get comfortable again, then you feed a little bit of negative, and as you feed left tail, you start steering from back to left to, uh, to forward again. So, forward, forward, right, back, in the negative, back, left, forward, in the positive. These are half zero flips. Look at my right hand right here. I'm going to put this in slow motion here so you guys can see the steering. So that's it for a half pair of flips. All right, so once you're comfortable with the half pair of flips, what you should do next is you, you should do a half pair of flip and then continue the pirouette. So we're gonna use a very slow pirouette here, about this, this speed right here. So I'm gonna do a half pair of flip to here, and I'm gonna continue the pirouette, and I'm gonna hold it in one spot. When I see the tail towards me, I'm going back and to forward, and I'm gonna hold the pirouette again. The timer's going off, but I have another minute, so. Okay, let's do it again. Slow down the pirouette. When I see the tail towards me, I'm gonna be going up, right, and back into upside down. I'm gonna hold it there. When I see the tail towards me, back to forward, and stabilize it back into a pirouette. So this is why it's so critical and important that you master these pirouetting, uh, stationary pirouettes. Um, if you ever get in trouble here, just simply stop it. Stop it tail in, stop it nose in. At this point, you should be very comfortable with nose in, tail in. You should be comfortable with tail in upside down, nose in upside down. You shouldn't have any issues there, so. All right, um, as you can see, pyro flips are pretty complex. There's a few things that you can do to help you in, uh, make things easier for you. First thing I remember doing, and actually Bobby's done this as well, is 
you have to find the right pirouetting speed. Um, if it's too fast, it's too difficult. If it's too slow, it's too difficult. You have to find the right perfect pirouetting speed and that varies from individual to individual. It de depends on how comfortable you are. But what I recommend is to find the right pirouetting speed, which is kind of medium, not too fast, not too slow. And then use um, maybe dual rate switch uh, on your transmitter or simply adjust your endpoint adjustment so that you can achieve that pirouetting speed at full rudder. Um, the reason being is uh, when you're doing pirou flips, there's a lot going on. You're using collective, you're using cyclic, you're using uh, tail. So you have three things that have to be perfect every time. As you go up and down on your collective from positive to negative, your tail speed might, may vary. But if you have that switch so that you can peg the tail, then you're removing basically one of the three um, parts out of the equation. You just not worry about the tail, you peg the tail, and then you feed positive, negative, you know your tail speed is gonna be always the same. So at this point, you're only worrying about your collective transition from right side up to upside down, and your steering. Um, so that's a very good tip. The more comfortable you get with the pier flips, then you can increase your tail speed to where you're comfortable with. And then at that point, you don't have to worry about pegging the stick. Then you'll be comfortable holding a certain tail speed regardless of where your collective stick is. Uh, another tip is one thing that is important to keep in mind. Once you start doing the continuous pier flips, like we're going to show now, um, your, uh, your, cyclic, your cyclic steer um, will actually determine how many flips per pirouette you're doing, or how many pirouettes, I guess you should say, per, per flip you're doing. There, this is not an exact science. You cannot say, well, I'm gonna do three pirouettes, pirouettes per flip. You, you can't do that. But basically, uh, what it does is the closer to center you stay, the less flips you're gonna actually achieve per pirouette. So no, or less, yeah, correction. You're gonna have a lot more pirouettes with less flipping. That's what I mean to say. The farther out you are on your steering, the more you're going to flip the helicopter, so you're going to see less pirouettes per flip. And I'm going to demonstrate that here, so. All right, here we go. So we're going to put everything together here. So the hard thing about this is that from the half pirou flip to the full pirou flip, you guys are basically going to have to sort of figure this out on your own because it's really very hard to explain what takes place. But what I'm going to do is a half. I'm, I'm going to actually make uh, explain the difference between half pirou flip and full pirou flip. Like I explained before, a half pirou flip is a transition from tail in, right side up, to tail in, upside down, and from tail in, upside down, to tail in, right side up. And as you saw before, I was steering from top to right to bottom. I paused, and then I steered from bottom to left to top. A full pirou flip is actually a transition from tail in, right side up, to nose in, upside down. So every time the helicopter completes a full pirouette, you have transitioned on your cyclic from top to right to bottom to left to top again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a full pirou flip, but I'm going to pause upside down. So I'm going to get a decent pirouette speed here, and I'm going to use my tail as a reference because I'm right side up. If I was upside down, I'd be using my nose as a reference. So here we go. When I see the tail come towards me, I'm going to steer up, right, back, left, and back to up. That was a little ugly. But that's the point here. See how I try to correct while I was upside down. Um, and that's what you need to actually do. When you get upside down, you pause. And now I'm going to use the nose as a reference. So when the nose comes towards me, I'm going to go up, right, back, left, and then up. So here we go. See, so I'm stabilized again. I'm going to do the same thing again. Waiting on the tail. Come around. I'm like way out there. See, now I'm pegging the tail on the left. I'm actually having a pretty fast pirouette speed. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit here. And bring it back, it's way out there. Try the same thing again. When I see the tail, I'm gonna steer forward, right, back, left. Here we go. And stabilize it. Same with the nose. So this is really good practice. Now my cyclic is very, very sensitive. 
I run about 12, God, I don't know, 11 degrees of cyclic. And my center uh, feel is very, very sensitive as well. It's really hard to make it look very smooth and precise when you have those kinds of throws. So I, I uh, highly encourage you guys to not run probably, I would say, more than six or seven degrees of cyclic to make this a lot easier. I actually should have changed that myself here to demonstrate, but uh, this is fine. So once you're comfortable with those flips and transitions from pirouetting right side up to upside down, you simply just continue to steer your stick. So we're going to go ahead and do the first full, non-stop, full pirouette flip here. And I'm going to keep pirouette flipping. As you can see, I'm steering on the right-hand side non-stop. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this in slow motion in the editing room so you guys can see the motion here. So that's a full pirouette flip. Now, like I said before, with the pointers, if you hold the tail, full deflection, it's going to make your life easier because you don't have to worry about how much tail you're feeding or how your tail input is changing as you apply positive and negative pitch. Also, keep in mind that when the helicopter is at a 90 degree angle, you have to be perfectly at zero pitch. I'm going to demonstrate what happens if I'm not at zero pitch. So I'm going to start pirouette flipping. And now watch, I'm going to feed positive, for example, like at the wrong time. I'm going to move that way now, see that? So it is very critical that you are at absolutely zero pitch when you're here. Zero, negative, zero, positive, zero, negative, zero, positive. And to make traveling pirouette flips, we'll get to that in a future more advanced episode, but you actually travel by using collective, not cyclic. If I wanted to go left, I had a feet like a little negative here, a little positive here, a little negative here. If I wanted to come back to the right, I will feed a little bit of extra positive here, a little bit of extra negative here. And that's how you make a traveling pirouette flip. Um, also, as I was explaining earlier, look at my right hand steering right now. I'm pretty close to center. I'm going to actually feed even less input on the right. See, I'm actually pirouetting a lot right now with very few flips. Now, if I start going farther out on my cyclic, watch what happens. A lot of flips. I'm going to go back in now. Now watch, again, a bunch of pirouettes, very little flipping. I'm going to go out farther. Now you see how I'm actually flipping a lot again. So, I guess that's it for pirou flips. It's a very, it's very difficult to explain what the maneuver's like. I, I hope and I believe that I've explained it well. Um, if you guys have any tips or suggestions, go to our website, make a post. We'll probably revisit pirou flips later. Everybody uh, wants to do pirou flips, and it seems like it's a sort of a benchmark. When you can do pirou flips, I guess you're, you could be called a 3D pilot. <laughs> but uh, so I hope this was useful. Um, practice the pirouetting like I explained before. Um, don't forget to go back to your basics. This is a little bit too advanced for where we're at right now, but uh, we're gonna continue on with the learning 3D lessons and we're gonna go back and show other stuff like rolls and rolling circles and loops and then we're eventually gonna get into actual pirouetting maneuvers, more advanced pirouetting maneuvers. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode of Learning 3D.